Okay, so now let's talk about necessary and sufficient conditions. If R and S are statements, R is a sufficient condition for S. It's the same thing as saying if R then S. R is a necessary condition for S. It's the same thing as saying if not R then not S. If not R then not S has a contrapositive and that is if S then R. So R is a necessary condition for S. It's the same thing as saying if not R then not S but also if S then R. A sufficient condition for S is R is the same thing as saying R is sufficient condition for S. And a necessary condition for S is R is the same thing as saying R is a necessary condition for S. Okay, so for number 40, they're asking us to rewrite the statement in an if-then form. So remember that sufficient is R implies S, and then necessary is S implies R. And one way I like to remember this is I think of SRS and NSR. You can think of some interesting acronyms for SRS or NSR. Uh, one thing I like to think of is some random soup and not some ramen. So you can ask yourself, what's for dinner today? Some random soup, not some ramen, which I usually eat. So S being the sufficient, R implies S, and then N being the necessary, and then S implies R. And here they say catching the 805 bus is a sufficient condition for me being on time for work. So sufficient means SRS, R implies S. So catching the bus would be R. Me being on time for work would be S, so if I catch the 805 bus, so if R, then I'm on time for work, which is then S. So this right here is this sentence, but in if-then format. So 42 and 43 asks us to use the contrapositive to rewrite the statement in if-then form, but in two ways. And here we have two sentences that has the necessary condition. And what we're going to do is rewrite these sentences into if-then form, one of which being the contrapositive of the other. The first sentence says, being divisible by 3 is a necessary condition for this number to be divisible by 9. So. The first part is always R, and then the second part is always S. However, we have necessary conditions, so N as R, which means S implies R, because S R, S R. Now, if we want to rewrite the sentence in if-then form, what we do is we write if, and then the S, so if this number is divisible by 9 then R then it is divisible by 3 now we want to write the contrapositive of the sentence so we take the then part of the original if then sentence, take the negation of it, and then put it next to if. So if this number is not divisible by 3, then the negation of the if part of the original if then sentence, then this number is not divisible by 9. So these three sentences are logically equivalent. Alright, so number 43 says, doing homework regularly is a necessary condition for Jim to pass the course. So, as always, the first part of the necessary condition is R, the second part 
is always s. And since it's a necessary condition, we write NSR, not some ramen. And we have SR, so S implies R. And so if we want to rewrite the sentence in if then form, we would write if and then S. So Jim passes the course. If Jim passes the course, then R, he will do homework regularly. So you can see here that I changed some of the words around. Instead of saying then doing homework regularly, I said then he will do homework regularly. I did this so that the sentence can be more clear and make sense. Okay, and then we want to write the contrapositive of this if then sentence. So we would write if, and then the negation of the then part of the original if then sentence. If Jim doesn't, do homework regularly, then he, or Jim, it doesn't matter, he will not pass the course. So these three sentences are logically equivalent. Okay, so now for the next question, it says, note that a sufficient condition for S is R means R is a sufficient condition for S and that a necessary condition for S is R means R is a necessary, a necessary condition for S. Rewrite the statement in if-then form. So 44 says, a sufficient condition for John's team to win the championship is that it win the rest of its games. So following what this paragraph says, a sufficient condition for S is R is the same thing as saying, R is a sufficient condition for S. So a sufficient condition, which is what we have right here, for S, so this whole thing right here is S, is R. So is, and then after that, I'm going to cap it right here, is R. So John's team to win the championship is S. It wins the rest of his games is R. So now we want to rewrite this sentence in if-then form. But first, let's rewrite it in this form. R is a sufficient condition for us. John's team winning the rest of its games is a sufficient condition for winning the championships. So I just said, R, John's team winning the rest of his games is a sufficient condition for S, which is winning the championships. And now we want to rewrite this sentence in if-then form. So since we have the word sufficient in the sentence, we know that it's SRS, some random soup, S, R implies S. So S stands for sufficient, and then we have R implies S. And remember that the first part is always R, and the second part is always S. So R implies S. If John's team wins the rest of its games, then John's team will win the championship. There we have it. These three sentences are logically equivalent. Okay, now let's do number 46. Number 46 says, if a compound X is boiling, then its temperature must be at least 150 degrees Celsius. Assuming that this sentence is true, which of the following must also be true? And they gave us a bunch of sentences that they typed up. So we want to see if each of these sentences are logically equivalent to this sentence or not. So... 
If compound X is boiling, then its temperature must be at least 150 degrees Celsius. A says, if the temperature of compound X is at least 150 degrees Celsius, then compound X is boiling. So if we break this down to be P, this right here to be Q, if P then Q, now A is saying if Q then P because this, this statement right here is the same thing as this statement and this statement right here is the same thing as this statement. So we have P implies Q and A is Q implies P which is the converse and the converse is not logically equivalent to the original conditional statement. So no, this one is not the same as, it doesn't have the same meaning as this original if then sentence. Okay, now let's look at the next one. If the temperature of compound X is less than 150 degrees Celsius, then compound X is not boiling. So this part, the temperature of compound X is less than 150 degrees Celsius. That's the negation of Q. And then the then part of this if then sentence says compound X is not boiling. That's the opposite of compound X is boiling. So this right here is the negation of P. So we could say negation of Q implies negation of P. And that is logically equivalent to P implies Q because this right here is a contrapositive of this. So yes, this is the same, or not the exact same sentence, but it's logically equivalent to this sentence up here. Okay, so C says compound X will boil only if its temperature is at least 150 degrees Celsius. So this first part right here, we can call that P, and this part right here is Q. And we know that only if means whatever's at the beginning or the first part of the only if is the if part. And then the second part of the only if statement is the then part. So if compound X is boiling, then this temperature is at least 150 degrees Celsius. So this sentence right here is the same sentence as this sentence. So this sentence is logically equivalent to this sentence. So C is the same. Okay, now let's do D. D says, if compound X is not boiling, then its temperature is less than 150 degrees Celsius. So if compound X is not boiling, it's the opposite of if compound X is boiling, so this is negation of P, then its temperature is less than 150 degrees Celsius. So the temperature must be at least 150 degrees Celsius is the original sentence, and the temperature is less than 150 degrees Celsius is the opposite of that. So this would be the negation of Q. So this is saying, Negation of P implies the negation of Q. And this right here is the inverse of P implies Q. And we know that the inverse is not logically equivalent to the original conditional statement. So this right here is not logically equivalent to this sentence. Or this sentence right here is not logically equivalent to this sentence. Okay, let's do the next one now. Okay, so the next sentence says, a necessary condition for compound X to boil is that its temperature be at least 150 degrees Celsius. So when it's in this form, the first part is S, and then the second part is R. And if we want to rewrite it in a different form, in the original form that we talked about earlier, we could say, Compound X being at least 
150 degrees Celsius. So R, pretty much, so this right here is R, is a necessary, I don't know how to spell, um, necessary condition for compound X to boil. And this right here is a necessary condition. And this right here is the X. So now we want to rewrite necessary condition in F then form. We know the acronym NSR tells us S implies R. So if compound X boils, or if compound X is boiling, then compound X is at least 150 degrees Celsius. And if you compare this to the original statement, if compound X is boiling, then the temperature must be at least 150 degrees Celsius then compound X is at least 150 degrees Celsius. So these two sentences are the same, so they are logically equivalent. A sufficient condition for compound X to boil is that its temperature be at least 150 degrees Celsius. So if you want to rewrite this sentence in the form of R is a sufficient condition for S, we can say the first part of this sentence, so compound X to boil is that its temperature compound X to boil. This is S, and then its temperature is at least 150 degrees Celsius. That's R. So now if you want to rewrite the sentence to be R is a sufficient condition for S, we just do that. So like that. So compound X has a temperature of at least 150 degrees Celsius is a sufficient condition for compound X to boil. So now we have R. That's very messy. Let me do that in a different color. So this right here is R. And this right here is S. And if you want to rewrite that in if-then form, we know that we're dealing with sufficient conditions. So S, R, S. So R implies S. So if R, so if compound X has a temperature of at least 150 degrees Celsius, then S, which is compound X, will boil or a compound X is boiling. And if we compare this sentence to this sentence, this is saying Q implies P because Q is the temperature must be at least 150 degrees Celsius, which is the if part, and then P is compound X is boiling, which is the then part. So then Q implies P we have here P implies Q and this right here is the converse and the converse is not logically equivalent to the original conditional statement. So this sentence right here is not logically equivalent to the sentence. So overall we have B being the same, C being the same, and E being the same. So B, C, and E are logically equivalent to this sentence.